Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about Bitcoin DeFi. How can we have different types of DeFi applications on top of Bitcoin? There's a couple different ways to do it. For me, this is kind of a fun new journey, uh, figuring out how these things work. This is the intro. Uh, no, this is the intro video. I have a series of videos where I dive in deeper, so stay tuned and make sure you check out my future videos to come out. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop on over to my article. So I write this first on Thursdays. This is called the Held Report. Uh, so I write these topics first on Thursday, then I talk about them on video on Sundays. And uh, before we begin, I want to give a shout out to Ledin. Ledin is one of my sponsors. They're a great place to lend your Bitcoin out and earn yield or borrow against your Bitcoin. I definitely recommend checking them out. I personally use them. Um, of course, there are risks that you take when you earn yield on your Bitcoin, but uh, give it a good research. Go look into it. And uh, let's go ahead and head back to the article. All right. So what is DeFi? This, I think, is actually <laughs> a really good spot to start because people keep using this term DeFi, and I think it's somewhat overly used. It's kind of like using the word blockchain, right? Um, so at the most basic fundamental, I think, definition of DeFi is that we could build decentralized financial services through blockchain and smart contract technology um, to where we build a world that's permissionless. I don't have to ask anyone for permission to get a loan or to lend out my coin. There's no KYC AML. Um, you could do all sorts of other more sophisticated financial contracts. Um, and so that's, that's what the world of DeFi promises. Now, some people think of it as this panacea for all traditional legacy financial issues. I don't think that that's what it's useful for. There are some things it's useful for, and it's interesting to see people experiment with it, but it's certainly not a panacea for all, <laughs> for all uh, legacy financial issues. Um, in some of these activities, there are some sort of st structural problems as well that I think aren't covered very deeply, and I will be covering it in the series. But some of these activities are circular. For example, um, you borrow dollars against, you borrow USDC against your uh, ETH, and then you use that to trade something else. It's, it's a bit circular where there's a lot of this activity is just happening within the same ecosystem. And also there are some structural issues, for example, like with Maker MakerDAO. Um, with Maker, um, they create a stable coin and they use collateral to uh, basically back the stable coin. There's more complexities to it and I'm overly simplifying it. But right now, most of that collateral is actually USDC or USDT, which is a completely centralized coin. And if they froze it, that would cause a cascading effect that would infect, that would impact all these other smart contracts and DeFi pro uh, projects. So, you know, it's a, th there's a lot to explore here. Just wanna say that like when going into this, this is very experimental. You know, I recommend that if people try some of the stuff out that you use a little bit of money, <laughs> um, there could be things that go very wrong, but it's really exciting, kind of interesting, uh, pretty interesting too, and, and something that we should definitely explore. So right now, DeFi is most popular on Ethereum. Um, Ethereum has a couple different reasons why, a more friendly scripting language, malleable protocol, which means that they can change it all the time, for example, to add like scalability, um, which co of course comes at the at the trade-off of decentralization, which is why the whole point of why blockchains are valuable. Um, and then um, network effects too. There's a lot of developers who build on top of Ethereum. So, but Bitcoin DeFi is coming. Uh, there's a couple of different terms for it. BitFi, my favorite is Sound Finance. Uh, Sound Finance, I think was actually coined by the Atomic Finance folks. Um, I like that a lot. And uh, by the way, definitely recommend everyone check out Elise Kylene's video here, uh, which will be linked in the bottom. The video is her talking about how she thinks uh, DeFi should be built, uh, being built on Bitcoin versus another chain. This is her profile. Definitely recommend you check her out. She's really sharp. I've known her for almost eight years in the crypto space, so she's been around a long time. Um, and you know, her, to her point, and this is what I also I also agree with her premise here: to build Bitcoin on a centralized protocol or, or on a protocol that isn't as decentralized as possible is sort of like building an inherently like unstable foundation. And that's where I think Bitcoin has the most solid foundation for DeFi to exist. Um, it's not as developer friendly, has some other flaws, but uh, we're just now seeing the Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem start to flourish. And that's that's why I went down this path is to learn about it more myself, but then to also um, just kind of see where um, exciting things might be going on. Now, Bitcoin doesn't need DeFi to succeed. It is already very successful as a store of value. So as a money, Bitcoin is very successful. I want to make sure we make that clear because with these other protocols, DeFi is the definition of how they become successful. Um, Bitcoin doesn't need it. It's a nice to have. It's a cherry on top in terms of functionality. 
but Bitcoin will be successful even if Bitcoin DeFi is not built on uh, Bitcoin. So today I'm going to cover some of the bigger projects at a very high level. Like I said before, in the future articles, I'm going to dig down a little bit more deeply into each one. And um, like, I, like I said, I'm pretty new in my journey, so I'm, I'm just kind of exploring with you. So we're kind of exploring together here. Um, before I wrote this, I ran a Twitter poll uh, saying, hey, I'm going to write about Bitcoin DeFi. What projects do you want to hear about most? And so these were the, the results, and that's, how I, that's why, how I ranked them in the article. I was covering the ones that folks wanted to hear about first. Okay, so... To, to get right in, Bitcoin DeFi with tokens. Now, the, fir the first two I talk about here, they do have tokens. I only personally like Bitcoin, so I'm not recommending that you buy these tokens. And I didn't want to risk my own capital, so some of these developers and projects gave me a little bit that I can play around with. I will be donating this to the Bitcoin uh, to Bitcoin Core Development at the end. Again, these are other tokens. Now, some of these tokens allow you to do different things that interact with Bitcoin. But just know that that is a separate token. So with that being said, let's go ahead and, and jump on in. All right, Stacks. So Stacks is a really interesting, um, really interesting project. It's been around a long time. Um, the two founders, Munib and Ryan, they had previously kind of written about building smart contracts and, and kind of DeFi on top of Bitcoin since like 2013. And they've explored a couple of different ways to do it. And Stacks is, is a long project that they worked on that uh, basically just got released in earlier this year. It's, so it's pretty new. They've been building it a long time, but Stacks 2.0 just launched a few months ago. So they've got uh, essentially allows you to build apps and smart contracts on Bitcoin, um, but the, you do need to use the Stacks token for some of these things. What's cool is that I dived in a little bit deeper, and I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna have a deep dive just on Stacks alone. Um, evidently, they also can have something where you can either have smart contracts that run with uh, Upane stacks as the gas mechanism, or it, can, it actually monitors the Bitcoin blockchain, so you can create a smart contract. It's sort of like watching different transactions occur on the Bitcoin blockchain can trigger certain events and certain smart contract functionality. So uh, some of this stuff gets really technical in terms of how these all work, <laughs> and I'm definitely not going to do it right. I'm definitely not going to explain it right the first time, but these are some of my best explanations of how this all works and, and what it does. So essentially how stacking works. So stacking, um, let's see here, let me pull up. So you can earn a return in Bitcoin on your Stacks token. Um, and so that's kind of a fun way to earn Bitcoin yield. Again, you probably, you know, I don't recommend holding Stacks, but I, you know, I think, you know, like it is interesting how it throws off the yield. And the reason why it does that is that the source of truth for Stacks resides in Bitcoin. So essentially they kind of uh, are anchored to the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, how it works are that Stacks miners bid in Bitcoin to earn the block and uh, so they bid bitcoin to try to earn the block so it's you know sort of a quasi it's kind of a it's a kind of a quasi proof of work and proof of stake system combined it's it's a little bit tricky to explain so these big these uh, stacks miners um, bid bitcoin in order to win the stacks block and stack stakers stake and that's uh, some you know essentially they receive the bitcoin from the stacks miners as uh, a yield and so it's sort of this a kind of quasi proof of work proof of stake system but yeah a little bit trickier i'm going to dive in deeper at a future date i don't want to go i don't want to spend too much time here um and i write you know i write this a little bit um you know and of course over time that this reward declines kind of like how the bitcoin issuance schedule declines as well they've got a lot of different features like for example they line up some of their issuance schedule exactly with bitcoins like with the halving so a lot of a lot of things tied with the bitcoin blockchain um yeah, again, I want to call out your earning a yield if you if you st if you stack um, if you're if you own the SDX token, you stack it and earn Bitcoin yield. You are holding Stacks token and you're earning Bitcoin yield, but it's, again, you're kind of exposed to the Stacks price and volatility. Um, the stake the stacking process is pretty straightforward. So there's non-custodial and custodial. Custodial is a little bit easier. Non-custodial, you have to have a, a very large amount of Stacks to do that with. Um, I chose Xverse, so Xverse was a really easy to use app, um, super simple. I think they're in beta right now, which means you have to uh, send, in a, send in an email. Um, and I'll also try out the Stacks client as well um, on desktop, and I'll show some screenshots of that when I dig in deeper. So as you can see here, you've got like the locked amount, and you have like the different, um, the progress bar and stacking, and then also you can see here, 
around like the stacks, how much is in there, and then how much has been, you know, in, is being stacked right now, and then the throwing off a Bitcoin yield. So that's my Bitcoin balance. Um, I'll check out, like, it, it's a little bit more complicated. I want to spend more time with the team to understand more about how it works. So I'll be digging in a lot deeper later. Um, okay. And, and I'll, hi, everyone. A quick interruption. I want to say hi from CryptoTag. CryptoTag is one of my other sponsors. This is how I store my Bitcoin backup. This Your backup is the 12 to 24 words, words that you etch on this. It's what I personally use. It's made out of titanium. It's fireproof, waterproof, crush proof. Definitely recommend it. All right. Now back to back to the video. So this stuff gets really technical. And I want to make sure I have time to dive in super deep on an individual video. Okay, next is Sovereign. So Sovereign and uh, RSK, these are essentially RSK is a really old um, Bitcoin DeFi sort of project. Now, these all, uh, let me switch back here. So the RSK uh, protocol is, is coded into uh, Solidity um, and it sort of has a, it's sort of like a, it's a side chain. It's essentially a merge mine side chain means they use Bitcoin's hashing power to secure their network as well. So sort of kind of like Stacks 2 was being anchored in the Bitcoin blockchain. You could say that they're both kind of anchored in Bitcoin's blockchain in terms of security and transaction ordering. Um, the RSK protocol is uh, coded in Solidity um, and it acts as sort of a bridge between uh, Bitcoin and its chain. The native currency is the RSK Smart Bitcoin token, so R. RBTC and has a one-to-one -one ratio with Bitcoin. Um, you know, again, you know, if I haven't dived into deep here, I'm guessing there's a way that you can switch between both. Um, and so with, with this RBTC, this sort of like Bitcoin and its ecosystem, you can essentially run dApps that aren't available natively in the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, if you're converting Bitcoin to RBTC, you're probably hitting a taxable event. I think that's uh, something important to call out here. Um, you know, Again, hodling Bitcoin is, is what I recommend. I'm exploring these because I want to see what, what additional functionality we can bring to Bitcoin and what that what it takes to do so. Um, and so, yeah, there's a little bit more a little bit more knowledge here from the website in terms of like what you can do. Um, Sovereign is a project that was built on top of RSK, and so Sovereign has the ability to borrow and lend, um, earn money uh, on liquid, earn yield on liquidity uh, by doing liquidity mining. So there's, uh, it kind of adds, it's kind of one of the first popular applications on top of uh, RSK. So I'm having a little bit of trouble finding a lot more of like how RSK functions with Sovereign, but I'm going to dig into that more on a deeper dive where I'm going to talk to some of the development teams and, and figure that out. Okay, so Bitcoin DeFi without tokens. Um, these smart contracts pro slash protocols don't need an additional token to work, uh, which I find them a little bit more pure play Bitcoin DeFi and personally find these really, really interesting. Um, DLCs, discrete log contracts, basically two parties, um, can, they can bet on the outcome of a certain condition being met, like what the price of Bitcoin might be tomorrow. Um, what's kind of cool is that, uh, it looks like a standard multi-signature, uh, contract, which means it preserves the privacy of the bet itself. Um, and essentially what happens is an Oracle pipes in external data and that, and they can sign the contract uh, with the hash of the winning outcome. Um, so essentially this Oracle pipes in the data of like who won and helps uh, have a resolution process to that agreement. Um, some of the companies working on this, one is called Atomic Finance. I just signed up for the beta. The beta was awesome. These guys, I, I've done um, I've done tweet storms on covered calls and how covered calls work. So covered calls, essentially what you do is you, uh, if you have Bitcoin, you can sell a covered call. So covered means you own the underlying asset. When you sell a covered call, what you're doing is you're selling your upside past a certain price called the strike price. So for example, you can sell a covered call for Bitcoin being hitting $100,000 by um, July 31st. And if Bitcoin is, in, and so the buyer of this contract pays me an amount of money and I would be forced to sell him my Bitcoin at that strike, no matter how high Bitcoin goes. If it is lower than the strike price, I don't have to sell my Bitcoin at all. I keep all the money that he paid me as a premium. That's called the premium. And that, that's a sort of a yield that you can sort of earn on your Bitcoin. So they created the covered call contract on Bitcoin, which was really cool using DLC or yeah, using uh, discrete, uh, discrete law contracts. So I just signed up for the beta. I think they do a really good job of making <laughs> how to earn a yield with covered calls 
understandable covered calls. I mean, when people hear the word options, they think of like a whiteboard from a beautiful mind with numbers written all over it. It is complicated, but covered calls are actually quite quite a simple uh, trade. It's are you sac are you willing to sell your Bitcoin above a certain price, and someone else will pay you for that privilege. So. Yeah, I uh, checked it out. I'm about to put in a little, little bit of coin in there to try it out, but uh, really, really cool. I think they did, did a beautiful job of just making it simple. I've also used LedgerX before, which is a centralized exchange. And what's cool about this is that it's decentralized to where um, it's very difficult for them to, uh, basically impossible for them to run away with your Bitcoin. And they built this beautiful app in terms of showing you what risk you're taking and how much of a yield that you'd throw off from taking that risk. Um, it's, you know, options can get more complicated than that, but I think they're one of the best places in the world that has visualized options data. Honestly, I've checked it out everywhere from E-Trade to other companies. So I think that's really cool. Um, Lightning, Lightning is a layer two technology that facilitates transactions off chain that eventually settle on Bitcoin's base layer. Uh, this enables Bitcoin to process exponentially more transactions, like essentially Visa. You could put Visa and have that operate on the Bitcoin blockchain. Lightning Pool is uh, built um, kind of in the same vein here. And Lightning Pool is where you can essentially provide liquidity for the opening and closing of these Lightning channels. Um, there's a little bit of complexity about how that works. Git Umbral is an awesome node running software, and they have um, they just allowed, I think a couple of months ago, or February, so actually, actually more like three months ago, uh, they made this a little bit more understandable. So in their software, you can go and, and uh, provide liquidity to these Lightning channels and earn a yield on your Bitcoin, which is, I think, really, really cool. Um, so yeah, those are the two ones that I think are really interesting on like native Bitcoin. Uh, like it's na it doesn't use any other token and it's like more Bitcoin native DeFi. Definitely, I'm definitely more excited about those uh, personally, just because, you know, for me, I want to hold Bitcoin and earn a yield on my Bitcoin and these allow you to do that. Um, so in conclusion, I got a lot to cover. I'm going to be covering this in a series of videos per, uh, you know, Sovereign, Stacks, Lightning Pool and these other ones. So it's going to be a fun exploration. Make sure to subscribe. If you subscribe, that helps me out and you get notified next time. Subscribe and uh, hit the notifications button. That way, next time I come out with these videos, you'll get an alert. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you next week. Cheers. Bye.